Hello, this is Artifacts of Mars, and predictably, the uh, government media complex is coming down on Trump with the usual, the demagogue, and he's going to be Hitler and all this. Uh, Newsbusters, which is a site that basically rips into the mainstream media, lamestream media if you prefer, uh, compiled a bunch of these. I'm going to read some of them. Then we're going to go to one of the lamestream sites and show what the Europeans are saying. The three networks, which are basically Obama's propaganda wing, immediately derided tri Donald Trump's dark speech is coming from vengeful, vengeful demagogue. On NBC, Tom Brokaw, while the, some will see Trump as on a white horse, will lead them to some kind of sanctuary and then pull drawbridge up. That's not how I see him. But he sneered, others looking in are going to see someone they will only think is as a demagogue of some kind. I don't see him as either one. I see him as an American who wants to restore this country to its former glory. All right, I prefer make America great again. Over at CBS Evening News, anchor Scott Pelley immediately dismissed as law voice, more vengeful than hopeful, more hyperbole than details. CBS this morning, Charlie Rose huffed that the dress had little appeal to the better angels. On ABC, George Stephanopoulos, a former Democratic operative, a former Democratic operative, <laughs> echoed his colleague Chuck Todd. He painted a dark picture of where America stands today, for emphasis, Stephanopoulos, Repeated in Martha Radatz of the Pretty Dark Speech. Martha Radatz, I don't know who this is. Martha Radatz chided if Americans are not scared for the safety for tonight. They are tonight. Incorrect, madam. Uh, after living through eight years of Obama... <laughs> that was more than enough to leave a, any sane person in a state of fear living through Obama. George Stephanopoulos, we've heard straight, we've heard about scrapping trade agreements and heard about stopping immigration from terrorist countries. He painted a dark picture of where America stands today. Yeah, I listened to this speech on the way home. And it was a little short on details, but he did identify the areas where this country has uh, gone right down the tubes. At least he's uh, not giving us some flowery, rose-colored glasses version. So this Martha Raddatz is apparently some whack job who... It's frightened of Trump. Uh, one of the reasons I'm so scared of <laughs> Obama is this, this whole white privilege thing came about. Obama's been on the white person ever since he's been in office. Well, as Jim Quinn mentioned that uh, they put in they put a tax on tanning salons as soon as Obama was in office. That's a tax on white people because People of color don't use those. It's true. Here's Tom Brokaw. Well, these are the themes that got him to where he is. This is an unlucky journey, but tonight he was delivered on steroids. People in this hall see him as a man on a white horse and lead them to some kind of sanctuary and pull drawbridge up behind them.
Others look in, they're going to see someone that they only think is a democrat of some kind. Unbelievable. Nicole Wallace. As stuck, struck by two things I always believed in the last two decades in Republican par politics. One, the voters always get it right, and two, the P Republican Party that I worked for for two decades died in this room tonight. <laughs> that might not be a bad thing. We are represented as a party by a man who believes in protectionism, isolationism, and nativism. <sighs> Well, he may be a nativist, but he's not a protectionist or an isolationist. You just bother listening to him, you nim nimrod. Nora O'Donnell and his family is joining him on stage as a tradition. It was a different speech you write by Donald Trump, and it sort of lacked the aspirational quality of these speeches. Charlie Rose is here. Charlie? Well, we've heard these lists of grievances before. It was a long speech tied together with two words, law and order. I can fix the system. Make it better. I am your voice on this one with little appeal to better angels. So, let's take a quick look at what the European media is thinking. In London, the left-leaning Guardian newspaper said it in its lead that the Republican had struck a Authoritarian tone in convention speech, speech, focusing on recent terrorist attacks and police killings, sure American safety will be restored, while the right-leaning telegraph, noting Trump had promised Americans to be the law and order candidate and had in process been what one journalist called a dark and terrifying portrait of America. Who said the telegraph is right-leaning? After three long, three after week long convention in Cleveland, Ohio, billionaire businessman, reality TV star, Sunday humbly and gratefully accepted the Republican presidential nomination on Thursday night. Europe's most powerful nation was not too impressed with newspapers. In Germany, generally knowing that there was little humility in his one hour and sixteen minutes. Trump addressed the convention making it the longest speech in 44 years. Der Spiegel noted that Trump's keynote speech was characterized by attacks against Hillary Clinton and the illegal immigrants, many promises, and lots of self-praise. Well, convention audience cheered, cheered wildly as Trump stood in front of a Row of American flags deliver a speech, chanting USA, USA, lock her up, referring to Hillary, and build the wall. Trump has the ability to make even Europe, Europe's right-wing political establishment look liberal. <laughs> like they, like I didn't see that they uh, looked liberal before. Well, there you have it. The media's on his case. You had to expect this. This is nothing new. And they aren't going to stop. They'll be on his rear end every step of the way. Believe me. They're going to be saying nasty things. The LA Times suggesting a coup against Trump and all this. Unbelievable. 